Welcome to Implementing Azure Backups. My name is Thomas Mitchell, and I will be leading you through this course on implementing and managing backups in the Azure environment. I'm an Azure content author at Cloud Academy, and I have over 25 years of IT experience. Azure Backup is the Azure-based service that's used to backup and restore your data in Microsoft Azure. It is designed to replace any existing on-premises or off-site backup solution that might be in place already. When a backup job is initiated by the Azure Backup Service, the service triggers a point-in-time snapshot by the backup extension. Azure Backup leverages the VM Snapshot extension in Windows and the VM Snapshot Linux extension in Linux. This extension is installed during the first VM backup, provided the VM is running. If the VM is not running at the time of the backup, the backup service instead will take a snapshot of the underlying storage for the VM. During the snapshot process on a VM, the backup service coordinates with the Volume Shadow Copy Service, or VSS, to ensure a consistent snapshot is taken of the virtual machine's disks. When backing up Linux VMs, custom scripts can be used to ensure consistency when taking the snapshot of the VM. After taking a snapshot, the Azure Backup Service transfers the data to the vault. Azure Backup maximizes efficiency by transferring only the changed data since the last backup. After the data transfer to the vault is complete, the snapshot is removed and a recovery point is created. It's important to note that all backup traffic from servers to the Recovery Services Vault is encrypted using Advanced Encryption Standard 256. The backup data is sent over a secure HTTPS link. Backup data stored in the Recovery Services Vault is also encrypted. Azure Backup offers several software components that can be downloaded and deployed to computers or servers, on-prem or in the cloud, that need to be protected. The components, called agents, that are deployed depend on what is being protected. Deploying an Azure Backup solution is a straightforward process. The first step is the creation of a recovery services vault. With the vault created, it can then be prepared to host backups. Once the vault is deployed and prepared, backup policies can be created and deployed. With policies deployed, backups can begin. Azure Backup offers three different restore options for VMs protected by Azure Backup. Restore points can be used to restore individual files and folders, or they can be used to recover entire disks. Restore points can also be used to create entirely new VMs as well. We'll cover these options in the upcoming demonstrations. Power BI is used to view and manage reports for Azure Backup. This will also be covered in the upcoming demonstrations. To support Azure Backup, a Recovery Services Vault must first be deployed. The Recovery Services Vault is the resource that stores all backups and all recovery points that have been created. It also contains the backup policies applied to protected virtual machines. Because VM backup is a local process, virtual machines from one region cannot be backed up to a recovery services vault in another region. As such, at least one recovery services vault must be deployed to every Azure region that has a VM to be backed up. To create a recovery services vault, sign into the Azure portal and from the hub menu, click all services. In the filter dialog, type Recovery Services. When you see Recovery Services vaults in the list, click it. If there are any pre-existing Recovery Services vaults already deployed in the subscription, those vaults are listed. From the Recovery Services vaults menu, click Add. The Recovery Services Vault menu then opens, and you are prompted for a name, subscription, resource group, and location. Provide a friendly name to identify the vault. The vault name must be unique within the Azure subscription and must contain between 2 and 50 characters. The vault name must start with a letter 
and can only contain letters, numbers, and hyphens. For this lab, we'll call it My Backup Vault. In the subscription section, choose an Azure subscription from the drop down. In the resource group section, you can either deploy the vault to a new resource group or you can use an existing resource group. For this exercise, we'll create a resource group called Backup Lab and use that one throughout the rest of the demonstrations. Choose a location from the location dropdown to select the geographic region for the vault. This selection specifies the geographic region where the backup data will be sent. For this lab, we're going to put everything in East US. One important note, if you plan to back up virtual machines that reside in multiple regions, you should create a recovery services vault in each region. Create the vault in the first region before going to the next region. For this demonstration, we will only be backing up a VM in one region. After supplying the necessary information for the new vault, click Create at the bottom of the Recovery Services vault menu. As is the case with many other resources in Azure, it can take a few minutes for the Recovery Services vault to be created. Monitor the status notifications in the upper right hand area of the portal to view the status of the deployment. Once the vault is created, it will appear in the list of recovery services vaults. You will sometimes need to click refresh to see it show up. After creating the vault, the storage replication for the vault needs to be configured. You can choose between geo redundant storage and local redundant storage when configuring a vault. By default, vaults are deployed with geo redundant storage. If the recovery services vault is the primary backup for your VMs, you should leave storage replication set to geo redundant. Although the locally redundant option is cheaper, it's also not as durable. To configure the storage replication setting for the vault, simply select the new vault and when the new vault is selected, the vault dashboard opens. From the vault management menu, scroll down to the manage section and click backup infrastructure. This opens the backup infrastructure menu. Click on backup configuration to open the backup configuration menu. From here, you can choose your preferred storage replication option for the vault. As I mentioned earlier, the vault is deployed by default with geo redundant storage. If the Azure backup solution functions as the primary backup, leave this option at geo redundant. Otherwise, you can change it to locally redundant to reduce the Azure storage costs associated with backups. After selecting the preferred option, click Save to store the new setting. Since we aren't changing the replication type for our new vault, we don't have anything to save. When data is backed up in Azure, the data is stored in a recovery services vault, which is easily accessible from the settings menu of most Azure services. Integrating the vault into the settings menu of most Azure services makes it easy to back up data. However, Running backups individually from each VM can become tedious, especially at scale. By deploying backup policies, it is easy to back up multiple virtual machines without a visit to the dashboard for each one. Configuring a backup policy sets the schedule for how often and when recovery points are taken. Backup policy settings also include retention settings for those backups. In this demonstration, we'll set up a backup policy that includes daily backups that are retained for 90 days. We'll also set up weekly backups that are retained for 52 weeks and monthlies that are retained for 36 months. To create the backup policy, browse to the new recovery vault 
and click Backup Policies under Policies on the left menu. To create the policy, click the Add button at the top. Since this new policy will back up an Azure VM, we'll select the Azure Virtual Machine Policy type. Provide a policy name in the Backup Policy menu and begin building the schedule for the policy. For our policy here, we will call the policy My Policy. Since we are operating out of the Eastern Time Zone, we'll set the time zone for backup frequency to Eastern Time. Since we are configuring dailies at this point, we'll leave the backup frequency set to daily. Our requirements call for daily backup retention to be 90 days. So for retention of daily backups, we'll set the retention range to 90 days. Because our requirements call for a 52-week retention for weekly backups, we'll set the retention of weekly backup points to 52 weeks. To ensure weekly backups are performed just prior to the new week, we'll keep the Sunday restore point. Our monthlies need to be retained for 36 months. So for retention of monthly backup, we'll configure the restore point from first Sunday of the month and retain it for 36 months. Since we aren't concerned about yearly backups, we can deselect the retention of yearly backup option. To complete the policy configuration, we just need to click Create to create the backup policy. Now that the backup policy has been created, we can associate the policy with a virtual machine by browsing to the vault and clicking Backup Policies. Click on the ellipsis next to the new policy and then click Associated Items. Clicking Add opens the Backup Goal Blade where we can select Azure as our workload source and Virtual Machine as the workload that we want to back up. Clicking Backup allows us to select the policy we wish to use. So we'll select the new policy that we just created. Clicking OK takes us to the Select Items to Backup menu where we can select the VM we want to back up. Clicking OK validates the selection and clicking Enable Backup submits the backup to be run based on our defined and selected policy. When the deployment completes, we receive a notification that deployment has completed successfully. If you're ready to learn about Azure Backup, how to set it up, and how to use it, let's get started.